the ogres reply in common, or one of the ogres replies in common. The, the trolls have gone missing, sir. The dragon, you know, none too pleased about this. They, they have a discussion back and forth about what happened to the trolls. Um, and the ogres are saying that they have no idea what happened to the trolls, but they don't sound too bright. And the dragon says the trolls wouldn't just go missing, blah, blah, blah. You need to find out what happened to them, blah, blah, blah. Also, he's hungry. Bring him some food. Uh, and if they can't find food, then one of them should stay here and feed him. At this point, the ogres get really upset uh, and nervous, and they all head on the, head out. Okay. Okay. So I would wait, like... Two minutes, and then I would silently move out. Okay. Very silently. <laughs> okay. So the dragon, fully awake. Not even now. two minutes. Oh, god. What? Mm. Wait. What's happening? I'm know. thinking. No, I messaged you again. Yeah. I think I'd wait like one minute, actually. I don't want to wait too long. Okay, so you wait a minute. 60 seconds pass, and you start creeping out after these guys. Yeah. Okay. You catch up to them. Uh, you know, you manage to stay behind them. Yeah. You still catch up to them. What is your move silently check? I think it's 60, but I don't have my character sheet, which I still need to find. Okay. It might be more. I'm looking... It's at least right 60. Move silently is 80, but you have armor on, but you're wearing elven chain mail, so that's not that big of a deal. Um, I think you have a penalty of 50. Yes, it does. I have at oh, least... Yeah. It jingles. Um... Yeah, you, you sneak up behind the ogres without them noticing. Like, you kind of peer around the corner and you see them walking yeah. up the up the spiral or kind of spiraled uh, ramp. Mm -hmm. what so do you I do just when you follow them from afar. And then I try to keep a lookout also to see if my party is following them. So my okay. main target is following them from a distance, like tracking. And a secondary target is to just look over behind me to see if I see my party or some movement to see if they're following as well. Okay. So you see them uh, crawling out of this little tunnel uh, and squeezing. You know, one of them like crawl gets on all fours and starts crawling through this. This narrow little passage and when he gets to the other side he like reaches back and one passes the torch through you guys on the outside all of a sudden you see this light appear by the entrance to the cave um and at this point vincent you hear harbinger uh, harbinger in your head say we should speak with the dragon is that what you wish friend <clears throat> i wish to slay him but dragon red dragons are Arrogant and cocky. Let's say we I do get you to help me speak with it. What would you have me say? You have questions about why he's there. I think those might be useful to seek his doom. And you I want think, me to ask the dragon? I think he's trapped. I think he's stuck. Okay. I'll... Uh... We're, we're giving us a couple days, friend. We're supposed to trail these ogres, but uh, I will take what you say. Very, You've served me very, very well, so I will... I, I can't promise you I'll have to put it to the group, but I, I'll do what I can. No reply from Harbinger. Harbinger. Yeah. Um, a second light pops out, and you see the pack of four ogres uh, stand near the entrance for a little while, chatting, and then they split into two groups. One when of they them, chat, is it an ogre, by the way? Yeah. You can hear uh, muffled words, but it's all an ogre. Do any okay. of you speak ogre? Don't no, the so. reason I ask is I'm trying not to metagame it, but them speaking English would be a big reason to capture them alive, but I don't know that, so. No. They're not English, but basic, whatever. Um, 
they split into two groups. One of them goes back the way they came, and the other one starts kind of heading out in your direction. Not exactly towards you guys, but in your general direction. So here's what happens. The second they split off like that, mm -hmm. the one that's heading in the other direction, I pat Horace on the shoulder and say, uh, follow that one, but don't go too far. Just find out what it's doing. And, I, and then I say, I got this one. Okay. Abigail, what do you do? You notice these ogres sneaking out and whatnot? Well, I would have followed the group heading out. Actually, I don't know where they he came in from, though. So yeah. can we, like, roll for randomness? Because I don't know where they're headed. Well, they crawl out of the through the tunnel, right? That takes them a little while to do. Uh, and once they crawl out, they hang out on the outside just chatting. Yeah. So you you're on the inside listening to them chatting yeah. in ogre, so you can't I hear. I don't anything. understand. Yeah. And then uh, all of a sudden they stop talking and start walking away. And at this point you do what? Well, I would want to try to follow them, but then I'll see that they're splitting up into two groups. So I think I should like roll to pick one because I would not know that one group is headed towards something else. Then right. So one group heads out towards the middle. One group heads out towards a wall um, over the edge. Uh, give me a D8 or any any even sided die. Evens you go left, uh, with the group headed home. Odds you go with the group headed towards the middle. Odds you head with the group going towards the middle. Okay. Okay. Uh, one sec. Does Horace get up and start following this other group? Horace, Horace, <coughs> Horace, what do you do? Um, well, I'm I'm with Vincent and and Azro, right? Right, but Vincent yes. told you to follow that group. Yeah, um, I I will from a distance. Group or one? Is it just two ogres? Yeah. Sorry, two it's ogres. Two. Let's find the other well, ogre. Two in each direction. Ogre. Okay, so Horace, you start stalking them as they head out. Um, all right, Abigail, you're out through the tunnel following these ogres as they head towards, kind of vaguely in the direction of the rest of the group, but you don't know that. Yeah, I'm still, I'm just following them from a distance. If mm -hmm. I see, like, cover, I'll dive to it. Like right. a bush, and I'm like, who? And then I follow them, Assassin's Creed style. Right, they don't seem to be really looking about too carefully and it's nighttime and they've got this torch so they're they they're just kind of like meandering they're yeah. clearly not looking for you um all right uh let's go with vincent and and co you see these ogres kind of heading vaguely in direction they're going to end up passing you guys about 30 feet to your left oh okay uh, and when you say you guys, you mean me and Azrael, I guess? You and Azrael, yeah. Okay, so I just kind of do the, the universal, you know, stay quiet to Azrael and yeah. and then uh, two fingers to eyes, point at them and just, you know, we kind of watch them go past us and then follow them with about a 30-foot buffer, I would say. Okay. Yep. So, Abigail, um, as you're following these ogres, eventually you see uh, Vincent and Azrael fall in line like a little bit in front of you because you're falling from like 60 feet and you see these guys like kind of sneak in front of you and start like sneaking yeah. along behind the ogres can i get a d20 from vincent and Azrael for sneakiness da, da, da. 13 yeah stealthiness 19 wow it's a ninja fucking dwarf, <laughs> ninja dwarf. i'm on my tippy toes he does stumbles wow now let's get perception checks from the ogres. I just do a random roll just to act to look cool, and Vincent's really impressed as he sees this. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, the ogres are walking, and you guys are following along behind them. And after a little bit, uh, one of them kind of stops and like holds up his hand to the other one, and they both stop and they start looking around really suspiciously. Uh, I duck behind something close to us. <laughs> behind Vincent. <laughs> if that's the closest thing to us, then yeah, I duck behind Vincent. So, Neil, <laughs> during our following of them, how obvious are they 
because here's what I'm thinking, like two people walking with purpose to a location would be not caring about where they're stepping, just walking and plowing in one direction or whatever. Are these guys like looking around and like, is it pretty obvious that they're hunting for food or looking for something or just perusing the area? They seem to just kind of be casually strolling in a direction. They're not, re- they're occasionally they'll glance around, but no more than you would if you're just walking down a street at night, you know? Okay. Then I'm not they're, really picking up on it. So yeah. Yeah. I duck down a little bit as they're looking around. Yeah. Do we need to roll for this? No, no, you guys need to roll nothing. Okay. Uh, after a few moments, they just kind of scratch their heads, shrug, and keep walking. Uh, let's flip over to Horace real quick. Like Horace, you you catch up to these guys as they are wa- uh, hiking up this hill to go over the crest. And you are trying to follow behind them, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. Give me a d20. <clears throat> We're rolling pretty good today, and I just cursed yeah. us. Oh, oh. Okay. Perfect. So you follow these guys, no problem. They get to the the top of the the rise, and they're kind of out of breath. You are... You put, what's your con? 14 con? 135 pounds? You're yep. a little bit short, a little bit on the heavy side, aren't you? No. Am no, I? you're fine. Uh, for an elf? Yeah. For a human, no. For an elf, not, not heavy, but, you know. I would say, like... You're, His physique matches um, that of which someone would have a mullet as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You have a little Think bit like of... Billy Ray Cyrus, basically. The young Billy Ray Cyrus. A young Billy Ray, yeah. Pre <laughs> Miley. Pre Miley. <laughs> Oddly enough, he, he figured it out post Miley, but anyways. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So you then follow after them over the crest, and you once you get to the top of this, you see them walking down towards uh, a very dim glow coming from the. Uh, on the other side of this ridge, it like it cuts down into a valley between two like crests of the mountain that runs okay. along, uh, and you see like a small glow coming from within the trees down there. It's e- it's probably like a six hundred foot height or you know drop in elevation as the uh, as the ogres are walking down the hill. Are they creating footprints? Some. Okay, I'll continue to uh, watch them, but keep my distance. Okay. Uh, at what point? So, at what point are you guys going to take an action rather than follow these o- ogres? Who are you speaking to? Both parties. Everyone. I would so, try to catch up. To, I'm just. Uh, we're, the, yeah, the plan is to follow them, but if if it becomes obvious that they're not actually heading anywhere, just um, let me know if I pick up on that. If I could. Well, I would well, try I to catch up to okay. Vincent and or and Azrael. I've, yeah, you can step him. to them pretty quickly. And then I would, like, just signal to them that I'm there and whisper to them that I know that some of there's some communication line being established and that the dragon's hungry and he wants some food. So there might be some hunting action going on. Wait, what did you say? So you come up to us and say this? Yeah, I, like, whispered it to you guys. As they're you, like, they're just hunting for food? They're not going anywhere? There's, I mean, I saw them split into two groups. I, I know there's some communication action that's going to be going on and some hunting. So I don't know which group is doing what. I okay. say, I, I turn to Vincent and go, if the dragon wants food, why don't we bring him the ogres? Yeah. Uh, Azra, you're a smart man. Uh, Abigail, I need you to track down Horace and help him with what you're about to see happen. Can you do that? Yeah. Okay. So... And as she says yes, I pull out my sword stand up and walk towards the uh, two ogres and say, uh, boys, gentlemen. They turn and face you. And I keep walking up to them, and I say, uh, I'm trying to look for a, a city. Do you, guys, do you guys know directions? They look at each other, grunt something. Uh, one of them pulls out his big fat club. The other one just kind of starts walking towards you with their torch. I say, uh, it's called Sick City. <laughs> And then I take a, a fucking stab at one of them. All right, let's roll some initiative here. At the same time, oh, I'm running God. past him, like, six, ready to attack six, this six thing. Uh, 
And I'm uh, uh, running towards Horus with my little speedy boots of Gonzalez action. And by that I mean amulet of cheetah speed. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you, oh, roll again. You guys tied. I also toggle my armlet, by the way, as I'm walking toward him. Okay. Seven this time. You guys go second. Okay. Um, Ogres come at you. Both of them coming right at Vincent. They swing their massive swords or clubs. Uh, One of them cracks Vincent right in the chest. (laughs) As he should. (laughs) Welcome to roleplay D&D. And he takes... Uh, Actually, I think he criticals Vincent with your damaged arm. He actually criticals Vincent (laughs) in the chest. Welcome Um, to roleplay (laughs) D&D. For... 12 damage, and give me a save versus death. You need to roll a 10 or higher. D20. Eight. Yeah. All right. Uh, location is 7. Severity is... It's big Ogre Club. Oh. Severity is 2d4, I believe. No. Severity is 2d6. Now remember, the precedent you set is even if this goes really great for a severity of death, really does fucking nothing, like we did with that dragon that I rolled perfectly <laughs> against and he had wobbly leg for the entire He's time he fought. Leg. Did nothing at all. <laughs> Vincent so, leg. leg spasm. Yeah, Vincent's so leg starts spasm. Make sure that, it, that this absolutely does nothing whatsoever. The... The club slams into your damaged plate mail, um, and you hear a crack as some of your ribs start to break. That's going to do something. It's going to do something. Uh, You have a penalty of two to hits. In addition, you already have a penalty of two to hits from your... You got hit in the torso before, right? Yeah. It was armor damage. Remember the troll ripped open your armor? Yeah, but you didn't do minus anything for or to hit there. Uh, It was was... speed, I think. It was, yeah, maybe it was half movement. Yeah, that's yeah. what it was, because me and him were the same speed. Right. Yeah, there was armor damaged half speed, yeah. So this is um, bludgeoning humanoids, torso, ribs broken, minor internal bleeding, half movement, minus two penalty to attacks. So now okay. you're moving, now you're just like you got this giant gash in your abdomen, and your ribs are broken. You're going to penalty you to two hits, and you're like, oh, limping along. What's the other uh, my health at, by the way? And did I gain two from the level up, or does it just the cap is raised by two? Yeah, um, we'll just add, it, add on to it. Or split it evenly, so you gain one. Okay, so, so you're at 27. 12. Uh, no, you weren't at full, though. Hold on, let me go grab my binder, which I left in there. You weren't at full? Uh, turns out I was at, like, one, and I didn't remember that, and I just died because I didn't remember. <laughs> I remember you drinking those potions. I, d- I thought you were at full. Though. I was pretty close to max, I thought, but I can't. Okay. It was like a week ago. We this it, it was a while ago, yeah. Or even more than a week, that's right, because we were just gone. Yep. Yeah, it's been a while since we played. He did use those heal potions, though, Neil. Like, yeah, you had actually, according off. to my records, your HP is at full. Okay. So, yeah, right, you're so at, I'm 27. at 27. Yeah. yeah. Uh, does now. the other one miss? The other oh, one misses entirely. It's 12 damage from my 39 health, Abigail. Well, before so Vincent kills both of them, Azrael runs past and goes to attack with uh, with Carl Ford on these things. All right, roll to hit. Uh, D20 plus 7 for 12 misses, I assume. You roll a 12? Yeah. Carl yeah, Ford's D20 plus 7, right? I didn't make that up. Uh, five, D20 plus 8. Okay, well now it is 13. Still 13, misses. still misses. Okay. So then I take my swipe, Neil. It would normally mm-hmm. be plus 14, but because I'm at negative 2, it's 12, right? Yes. For 15. <laughs> Thank God. That He's is a large number. creature, so it's a D12 12 plus 8. Seven. Or is it 7, seven. with the arm toggled? Oh, with the arm toggled, it's 8. Takes 14 damage. 14. And, uh... Uh, Ogre is alive. How bad? How bad is he? Um, he looks pretty fucked up. You slash him across the belly. 
And he's got this big streak across him, and you can see there's like, you know, part of his belly is folded down, uh, like kind of flopping down. So he's pretty fucked up, but he's still like teetering about and like oh, holding one hand over it with the torch, and uh, then with the other hand with the torch waving about like he's gonna slam it in your face. And I'll swipe at the other one now. Mm hmm. 15 to hit. Hit. 12 plus 8. For 15. 15, okay. Okay. Uh, you s actually stab through, partway through this guy, like kind of from the side. So you step through his belly and then back out. He reels, but does not fall to the ground. Okay. Now uh, for initiative? Now for initiative. One. Beat that, Neil, and don't actually beat that. Okay. <laughs> Go. Neil? Noticing that they're both. Azrael comes in and hits for Damn 28. Azrael! <laughs> <laughs> Azrael, you double crit, triple damage dice. So 3d8? Or no, they're large. What do what I roll for large? Um, 3d6 plus 3. 3d6 plus 3. 13. <laughs> you take your. Uh, you take Crawl 4 and smash him into the knee of one of the ogres who just goes. Oh! And like tumbles, and you see his legs snap in half, and he just like falls to the ground and <clears throat> screams in pain before he finishes dying. I turn to Vincent. I'm like, gotta be quicker. <laughs> <laughs> Vincent, so you was. hit him. <laughs> okay, he dies. So as they fall down dead, uh, <coughs> I put my hand in my chest, and I've taken a lot of freaking damage in the chest now. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm like, we we have to get. We gotta get into a town and repair this shit. I'm tired of these fucking guys beating my chest open. If we can find a forge, I can repair it for you, friend. Alright. We'll do what we can. But for now, Abigail had said something about this dragon need to be fed. I Harbinger thinks that I should talk to the dragon. We'll convene about that, but let's uh help me drag the lighter of the two of these back to the cave in case we want to throw it in there. Surely. I grab the ogre's arm to the best of my ability and start pulling Are they it. so they they have, they're, they're wearing like loin cloths, right? And then a club is what they're carrying. Yeah. All right. Well, we frisk them for gold. Do we find anything? No. They Do got, we find they, anything on them? They are wearing loin cloths. Uh, they have some uh, human skulls strapped to their waist by their hairs, by the, like the hair on the head. I take uh, the human have, skulls and wrap them around my waist. Okay. And by skulls, I, I don't just mean skulls, but like heads with hair. You know, they're kind of old and rotted. They look no. to be women's heads, uh, and one man who's got a ponytail, and that's tied to their ba waist. Uh, they have some bad meat on them, and uh, some really shitty wine. I just take the heads and put them on my waist, and then start dragging the body. Okay. Um, Vincent, you are suffering internal bleeding. Every six, every ten minutes... You take one to two points of damage, but you get a saving throw versus death to automatically stop the bleeding. Okay. Um, so That's how it would get stopped then, right? Because none of us are capable of stopping otherwise. Right, right. So after ten minutes, you take one point of damage. Give me a save versus death, so just d20. Fifteen, it's yeah, no pass. problem. After that point, it stops bleeding. My body mended. Mm -hmm. So all you've right, taken so 13 damage. For our party, then, Neil, that's all we're doing. We're dragging this one body back to the cave. Okay. Yep. Abigail, you got your cheetah speed on. You book it up this hill. What's your constitution? Nine. Okay. Uh, oh, but you're oh, you're an elf. So you you make it make it up the hill, and you see below you um, this soft glow from the forest down below, um, and a party of ogres, two of them. You're guessing. Uh, walking down. They're about halfway down the hillside. That's yours. And I look for us. Um, actually, give me a perception check, Abigail. <clears throat> He's quite well hidden. Yeah. 19. No, you do not see Horus. Okay, well, I'll keep following them from afar while scanning for Horus regularly. Okay, give me another perception check. 31. <laughs> okay. After about five or ten minutes, you spot Horus uh, stalking the ogres, and you can catch up to him. I'll creep up to him and I'll say, hey there, stranger. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing here? 
Yeah, the guys are gonna do some business. There's some, uh, the ogres were looking for food for the dragon. I think these are headed towards town to do some business for the dragon. What did you do with the other ones? I left Vincent and Azrael to deal with them. I don't know what they're doing with them. Okay, so what are we doing? Are we going back to the cave? Are we trying to kill these ogres? Or I think we should follow them. Okay. Do you so, agree? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been following them already, but you can come with me. This is going to be an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> an adventure. Okay, so we continue following <laughs> the <laughs> ogres, Neil. <laughs> I just imagine their characters really speaking They're like so that. Awkward. <laughs> no, like that's how their characters would be in yeah. the game. It'd yeah. be like, yeah. okay, we're going on an adventure. <laughs> and Abigail is like super happy. <laughs> exactly. I got like my little adventure. <laughs> yeah. I got my adventure boots on. It's gonna be great. Okay. Yeah, he's gonna knock those adventure boots too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You guys <laughs> climb back over the hill and head back towards the cave entrance, right? No, we no. are continuing to follow the ogres. Okay, sorry, I was zoning out for a moment. Um, you continue to follow the ogres. Uh, Vincent and Azriel, let's flip back to you. Uh, it's I'm like an asthmatic old man with an actual little asthmatic old man carrying back a uh, dead ogre to the cave. <laughs> yeah, you've your we chest. don't have the sexual tension, though, Neil, just to give you an idea of the coloring of our conversation. So yep. <laughs> when we talk, it's mostly just normal clipped, very normal communication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talking about sports and stuff. Uh, probably dragons and shit and, like, yeah. battles and asking about dwarven people. Yep. Okay, cool. You're having a hard time. You got some broken ribs. You've got your arm that's been ripped open, like, kind of cut into your belly. I, uh, life is rough for you right now. Yeah. Um, eventually, you guys get back to the mouth of the cave. And what do you do when you get back there? Kind of throw the body up against the wall. And uh, I'm, I'm very exhausted from this because of my injuries. So I just kind of sit down and uh, breathe deeply for a while and say, uh, well, we should, we should wait here for uh, um, the elves. <laughs> I'm kind of just looking at Vincent like in my head I'm thinking he's about to die probably <laughs> I'm just like yeah yeah, we should, should probably do that and I kind of like look at the ground as I talk to him and turn back around and start messing with the the ogres like just searching their bodies and whatnot, collecting the heads around their, their waist and putting those on my waist etc cetera, etc cetera. okay so um, flip back to Horace, Abigail. You guys keep following these ogres down to the bottom of the valley? We are. Okay. Um, 45 minutes later, you guys find yourself at the bottom of this hill. The ogres have gone into the forest, and you notice that there are a few huts inside. And there's a little fire going out like in the center of the, this collection of huts. How many huts? Six. Okay, and do we see any more ogres or any any other living things, or what else do we see besides the huts? Yeah, the two ogres that you tracked uh, walked up, you know, kind of walked up into the middle of the camp and started chatting with this other guy who was hanging out there. An ogre? Uh, another ogre. This guy's a little bit taller. He's like, you know, 10 feet tall instead of 9 feet tall. And he's got this big bronze piece of plate mail over his stomach, like a, a breastplate. And he carries a two-handed sword at his waist. And a horned helmet. This is an ogre, you said? Mm -hmm. Seems like Can he's we... the boss. Mm. He looks like the boss, for sure. Yeah. And when can I say two-handed sword, hear... I mean like a two-handed ogre sword, not a two-handed human sword. This thing is massive. Okay, can continue. we hear the conversation they're having? Uh, how close are you following? I, I want to try and get within earshot, but uh, remain hidden. 
Uh, I'll be saying this to Abigail. Maybe maybe it'll be yeah. better if you did it, Abigail. I'd, I would try to go for it if she asks. Yeah. I would try to like hide behind the hut or behind the tree or in the bush. Or in the shadows. Okay, right, well, you guys can sneak up to them. Give me a move silently check. Oh, I do your move silently checks, Abigail. Um, Horace, give me a d20. No, I'm going to I'm gonna stay, and she's okay. going to go. Okay, cool. Abigail, you sneak right up to uh, the corner of one of these huts and are hiding and listening, mm -hmm. and you can hear the ogres talking in ogre. Ah. I still wait up and try to do, like, um, my noise check to see if I listen in, that there's other people around, if it's just ogres, if I hear, you, like... You can thing. plainly hear ogres snoring inside the hut that you're next to. Okay. So I'm going to go back to Horus after that and report to him that they're talking in Ogre so I don't understand anything. Okay. Um, That's too bad. So what, what did, uh, did Vincent and Azrael say when you left them? I mean, should we go back to the cave now? Well, that, now that we know where the camp is, I mean, we could try to raid it and interrogate some of these ogres. We we could do that. We could also wait and observe where these two that were sent are headed towards. Like if they're coming back or if they're doing something else. Sure, we can do that. We can we can um, hide here in the forest and wait and see where they go. Okay. So we wait to see what they do after. Um, they have a conversation for a little bit. Uh, the ogre with the pointed the, the helmet goes back into one of the huts, uh, and the other two go back to two separate huts. They all just seem to go to go into their respective huts. Hmm. Did they wear Neil? Were they wearing pajamas? Could we make it more obvious they're going to sleep, or is it just? <laughs> You don't know what ogre pajamas look like, so they very may well have been wearing ogre pajamas. Can we see the Z's above time. their head? Yeah, is there Z's? <laughs> no, no. But you hear many snores coming from many huts nearby. All right, so we head back. Okay. You guys As head we back. Head... No, go, no, go ahead. As we head back, I say, you know I could kill them during their sleep. Have you done something like that before? Does she Killed say it as creepily as that, that, is that sounds, <laughs> Neil, or is that just... <laughs> yeah, I think it comes out kind of creepy. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, and with sexual tension mixed in there too, which is kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, I did that before. I saved the, I saved the Brigger's boys that way. They were trapped. You kill those big boys in their sleep if you want. Mm. It's okay. Of, did they all go to separate huts, or did any of them go to the same hut? The three that you were looking at went to separate huts. Okay. Um, Let's go report to Vincent and Asriel. Yeah, I mean, we need to interrogate at least one of them, right? And yeah. And if we start killing them now, maybe we, we can get them, come back, and kill them in their sleep. Yeah, I'd like, we'll I think that. it's better than fighting them off during daytime. I agree. All right, so we'll head back to the cave after our... Okay. <laughs> our and, uh, I think, JP, you said you wanted to break here? Yeah, it's about that time, so if this is as good as any time, we'll take a quick three-minute break, come back. We're going three hours tonight, not the full four, uh, but I think we're going right, to be playing. Right, Abigail? <laughs> yeah. Damn it. I think we're going to be playing again on Sunday sometime, so we're going to get two sh uh, yeah, shows in this works. week. Uh, I, I'm going to be out of town next Sunday. Okay, we'll figure it out after the show. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a quick three-minute break, and uh, we'll Saturday. deal with the scheduling afterwards. Uh, we'll see you guys then. Thanks, everyone, for watching. We'll be back in three minutes.